All right. All right. Now, okay. So now what we're going to do, we're actually going to add a little bit more commands. And I'm going to change the problem a little bit so you can see how we can modify our solution. The problem now says, I want you to draw two boxes, but these two boxes should not be uh, on top of each other. Should One should be on one side, another would be on the other side, or at least different position. So the purpose of this is that how to introduce you to a couple more commands. And these commands will help you when you're actually drawing different shapes. I'll give you an example. If you want to draw a house, if you want to draw a car, if you want to draw anything, a building, a street, anything like this, requires you to use your, uh, use your lift your pen and go somewhere else, draw it, and then maybe uh, do, uh, go to a particular coordinates and draw it. So how do we do that in Python and Turtle? How do we do it? We're going to introduce you to a new commands. First, I'm going to write a comment here, and this comment says move or go to, go to a new position, a new spot. How do I go to a new spot? Well, the first thing I need to do is that I don't want to go to a new spot with my hand on the board, right? I want to lift it up first. So I need to lift my drawing hand first. Okay, so how do I do that? We issue a command it's called pin up. All right. When you do pin up now, anything you do is actually doesn't take effect on the screen. You're not drawing anything on the screen. Now, to go to a particular position, how do you go to a particular position? We need to use a command, and that command is called do t dot go to. Go to where? Go to a particular point. How do you know where to go on the screen? Now, this is your result. This screen has a center point. The in graphics, in computers, in math, all this, it has a point of the point, uh, origin point. And that origin point, in this case, it's my starting point here. It's called 00, zero which is in the center of that screen. So 00, zero will be here at the center of my screen. Now, because I have zoomed the screen, you can't see that, all right? But in reality, I am actually, I start from the center of the screen, and that is point, starting point, which is 0, 0, 0 for x, and 0 for y. So if I want to go to a different position, what do I do? I need to say go to, and I need to give it input. This input requires two parameters, not one value, two inputs. What is it? The first input, for example, I can say 150, and the second input 150, all right? So now I lifted my pen and I went to a particular position. Now if I run this and see what happens, it went here, notice, it was here, but now it's gone here. But if nothing happens, nothing, none of the drawing happened. Why nothing of the drawing happened? Because what I just did is that I lifted my hand, went there, but I never put my hand down. I never put my pin down, all right, to start drawing. And that this type of error is called a logical error. So how do we fix it? Simply, you just add the missing or fix the missing problem. So what do we do? Here we say pin, just like we have pin down, pin up, we should have pin down. And now watch what happens. If you run it, now I got my two squares and two different locations. How do you use it? You use it, again, if you want to draw in, in your booklet, you have different exercises you have to draw. You want to draw a smiley face, you want to draw a car, you want to draw a house, you want to draw a building, anything like that. You can't just keep your pen down. You need to lift your pen and then go somewhere else and draw it. Again, just like we did here, maybe you want to change colors, right? And then you lift your, you lift your pen up, Go somewhere, change the color, and start drawing, right? So that is what we did in this uh, video. Now, I'm going to continue here. I'm going to continue. I'm going to introduce you to uh, another topic, which is how we draw. Remember the, in the PowerPoint, we had to draw multiple squares, and we, we did the, composi the composition of the problem. How do we implement it here? All right? Uh, what we're going to do, this is my solution. I'm going to show you, introduce you to something that is 
very important, and that is repetition. Repetition in programming is critical, and there are different ways of repetition. Uh, the basic form of it is not that difficult. You want to do something from 20 times, you just simply say for one to 20, do the following. And I will explain that into the, in the PowerPoint, in the PowerPoint. So now what I'm going to do, notice this, I am gonna delete all of this and keep this part, okay? Now if I draw it back to that original square. Now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna say here, remember that part that we actually did the angle, did we say uh, left by 100 degree. All right, just to change the angle because if I want to draw again, okay, so that is what we, this is my drawing one square. How do I draw 20 square? How do I draw, draw 100 square? How do I draw 1,000 square? Well, it's simple. We need to learn, a, you need to learn how to use a new command. And that command is called for loop. So for, and then I'm gonna say for i, x, z, whatever you want to call it. Some value that will change. A counter, we call that. Okay, so if I call it for x, for usually we use i, for i, n, and then you give it a range. I'm going to say from 1 to 50. What we just typed in here. We're learning a new command. This command allow you to repeat something, a task, over and over again, how long, how many times, 50 times. Now, I, in this case, will be your counter to keep track how many times you're repeating it. So the first time it will start with one, the second time it will be two, three, four, five, until 50, okay? So how do I repeat something over and over again? Just like other commands, there is a syntax, there is a rule, there's a grammar how to use this. The grammar says you have to use keyword I. You have to, uh, sorry, keyword for. You have to use a value called I. You have to use some, not I, could be anything here, right? Could be X, any variable name, any name that you want to put in there. And we will talk about these variables again in, the, in, uh, in future videos. N is a keyword, it says in this range, meaning what? Range means from one to 50. So now I will put this column which is telling me that this is the start of my for loop. What everything that goes underneath it need to be, uh, will be part of that loop. But how does it go underneath it? The easiest way, you just simply go to the line that need to be repeated over and over again. You just simply push the tab key. Now see how it is under this? That means this line is under this code. Now, enter, uh, will be repeated over and over again. Now, if I do this, this forward will be repeated over and over again. If I do this, will be part of that for loop. So everything that I shifted under the for loop or under that block will be actually repeated over and over again. Now, watch what happens. If I do this for all of them, remember what was this, all of this was doing. Remember, all of this was to do what? to draw one square. But now, instead of drawing one square only one time, I'm drawing this square how many times? 50 times. Now, I have changed the color in here. Maybe I don't need to change the color. I don't need to repeat the change in color every time. That means it could slow my program down. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna take it out from here, Command X, and then put it in here. Sorry, I'm gonna delete it, Control X or Command X. And then put it in here. Now, I don't wanna leave this empty line. And this one, notice, it's not in the same level as this, okay? All the lines, all the starting lines, they have to be at the same level. Okay, so I'm gonna put it, make sure that it starts at the same level. All of them starts at the same level. Let's see what happens. 
very nice, very cool, right? Notice that it's instead of one box now, you got 50 squares. And we got really, really nice shape, all right? Now the angle that you do, you get different shapes. For example, if I, instead of 100, if I make that only 95, okay, at the, at the end, when I draw the box, I change it to 95 only. Watch what happens. You get a different shape. Yeah? Very cool. And then you can do more and more. So to summarize it, to summarize what we've learned in this video, we learn how to do what? To use the pin up and pin down. I deleted that code. And then we learn how to use the for loop and notice my shape is not complete. So how would you solve the problem? We just simply do what? We need to draw more squares. So how do I draw more squares? I just simply go in here and say, instead of 50 times, I wanna repeat this, I'm gonna repeat it maybe 70 times, 75 times, all right? And then it is too slow, so I'm gonna make it faster. So what we do now, we see like the drawing is faster, a lot faster, and then you will get a different shape. Or you get the shape at least completed. Very nice, very cool. Come on, you can change different colors if you want. You can different squares. You can How do you change colors? You can change the color here, or you can change the colors in there. So repeating again what we've learned. We've learned how to use the pin up, pin down, the go to. The, we used we learned how to use the for loop and that should be enough knowledge for you to do some damage <laughs> as you say so you can actually now go ahead use your own creativity try different things and don't be afraid to try things because the way that you learn programming the, the way you learn pr practice is what you learn by trying and trying and trying you're not hurting anybody. You're not training, hurting the computers. All you're doing is you're increasing your knowledge. So I will see you in the next video.